Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at three questions to do with monetary policy and interest rates. So let's see if you can get all three right as part of your revision. Here's the first question. Which policy pursued by a central bank represents a contractionary monetary policy? Which policy pursued by a central bank is a contractionary monetary policy? Have a go. Okay, what do you reckon the right answer to this question is? The right answer is D, the sale of government bonds in the open market. <clears throat> we take you through the, uh, the reasoning for this. The sale of government bonds is when the central bank sells bonds to the commercial banks, for example. <clears throat> the banks will then pay for these illiquid bonds with cash, and the act of paying for those bonds means that the, the liquidity of the banking system, the cash in the banking system, is reduced, it drains away <clears throat> because the banks are paying with cash for long-term bonds. What this does is it makes commercial banks less able, therefore, to lend out to business and household customers because the liquidity has gone down. It therefore squeezes, reduces the supply of credit in the banking system, and that counts as a contractionary monetary policy. The sale of government bonds in the open market, as opposed to the purchase of bonds, is if is basically the opposite of what you may have come across, which is quantitative easing. Have a go at the next question. Other things being equal, all else being the same, what is likely to result from a fall, a decrease in interest rates? Have a go, press the pause button when you're ready, come back to me, we'll go through the answer together. Okay, <clears throat> so other things being the same, Keter is paribus what's likely to result from a fall in interest rates. Of course, this is an expansion in monetary policy. The likely effect is D, an increase in consumption. Normally, interest rates going down causes an expansion of household spending, a fall in the propensity to save, and an increase in the propensity to consume. People buy more goods and services. So to work through the other answers, option A is wrong because a fall in interest rates should cause planned capital spending to increase. <clears throat> a fall in interest rates would actually cause a net capital outflow. Typically, hot money leaves the economy in search of better interest rates. And C follows on from B, actually. Of course, a fall in interest rates would normally cause a depreciation of the currency uh, because of the outflow of hot money. So hopefully you got the answer there. The right answer is D. Let's move on to our third question. In the absence of offsetting factors, in the absence of offsetting factors, how will an increase in interest rates affect share prices? Have a go, press that pause button, think about the answer. Let's, uh, let's compare notes in a second or two. Okay, so how will a rise in interest rates affect the price of shares? Well, what do you reckon? Increase or decrease? I think it's likely to decrease share prices, <clears throat> other things being the same. So is it A or B? The answer is A. The reason it's A is because the yield on the, on the bond, the interest on a bond, is an alternative or a substitute to the dividend on a share. If you buy company shares, you expect a share of the profits, that's the dividend. If you buy a bond, you expect interest, the yield on a bond. So higher interest rates on bonds make bonds more attractive and that will encourage pension funds and insurance companies and others who are looking for income from their bond investments, perhaps to shift some of their money, some of their portfolio uh, into the bond market. And that might well involve moving money out of equities into bonds. <clears throat> the other aspect to consider is that if interest rates go up in the economy generally, that is likely to cause a downturn in aggregate demand, slowdown in spending, which will then probably hit company profits. And if company profits are lower, that is going to have a negative effect on share prices. That's going to make equities a less attractive investment. So for all those reasons, the correct answer is A. Okay, there we go. Three questions on interest rates.